Hey peeps, Jess here, and today we are taking on, I cannot believe I'm saying this out loud, Mr. Beast chocolate line. This is happening, this is real. This is the variety pack which has all the flavors. It has original, the quinoa crunch, and almonds. I will be skipping the almonds as my oral allergy syndrome decided to flare up. I'll put a link down below if you've never heard of oral allergy syndrome. Editor Jess here, who forgot to mention that, oh yeah, I'm a chocolate professional. I've been working in the craft chocolate industry as a writer and photographer for several years now, and I'm also now officially a chocolate judge since I helped judge the 2020 Chocolate Alliance Awards. So yeah, <laughs> there we go. I tried to get as much information on these chocolate bars beforehand, and there's not very much. Here's what I can tell you. We know they're 55% chocolate. We know it's Rainforest Alliance certified cacao, but we have no clue where the farm is. I know it's a product of Peru, it says so in the box, but that's all I can actually confirm. And the base chocolate has four ingredients. We've got sugar cane as the first ingredient, chocolate liqueur, cocoa butter, and sunflower lecithin. Chocolate core isn't bad, it's not an alcohol even actually. It's basically cacao nibs that have been ground into a paste and melted and then formed into raw chocolate blocks effectively. It likely means that they're producing the cacao off-site and maybe even buying it as liqueur. And sunflower lecithin is an emulsifier. So in chocolate, it's more popular in general so that large quantities of chocolate can move through these big industrial pipes to be piped out as bars at the other side. You're not gonna see it as often in bean to bar and craft chocolate. It's more common in more just like big scale chocolate processing. However, of the two popular lecithins, soy lecithin and sunflower lecithin, sunflower lecithin is a more like natural process. It's more like a cold processing than soy lecithin, which involves a lot of chemicals. So it's at least better of the two lecithins. That's pretty good. I have been avoiding this box for long enough. Let's do this. Yeah. All right. First things first, we're gonna have a discussion about how not to do chocolate labeling. Oh, and I'm gonna grab a less broken bar. Are all these, are all these broken? So my first request would be a different packaging. This one feels not broken. <laughs> okay, the reason I said let's talk labeling is there's basically none. So you expect to see certain things on the label. Like, okay, I wanna know what percentage chocolate this is. It's not posted, there's no information here, along with the origin, which isn't here. So I'd normally assume this is a blend. There's the info for how to get prizes, but nothing about the farm, nothing about much of anything. So I know more about the mystery ticket than I do about the chocolate. That's kind of frustrating. Okay, that's sweet smelling. And there's a sharpness to it, like chalkiness. It, it's very stuffy smelling, very dusty. It's got a pretty neat wavy line mold. That, that's kind of cool. Still smells, okay, now it smells more raisiny, but still dusty. Cheers. It has more flavor progression than I was expecting. It goes kind of raisin, kind of caramel, kind of shortbread, but I'm making this face because it's overwhelmingly sweet. Like, it's just a wash of sugar in there. Mind you, I'm actually impressed with the progression. Like, it's trying really hard in there to have some interesting notes to be a chocolate bar. Okay, that was actually kind of sad. So the second time I chewed it just like you would normally would, it's like chewing on a candy bar. All I get is like coconut and sugar. And like coconut sugar, not coconut. So it's just sweet on sweet. And oh dear, it's sweet. I should back up. I am someone who adores what we call like the, the middle ground, like the dark milks. They are my jam. I love a good 40 to 65%, especially with nibs. And this is just too sweet but it's reasonably creamy and it's not the worst bar I've had if you actually eat it correctly where you're letting it melt on the tongue. If you chew it like a kid who eats a candy bar, it's really sweet and not pleasant to eat at all. Wow. With all that out of the way, let's try the quinoa. And this looks like a crunch bar and that was my jam as a kid, so I'm, I'm a bit more hopeful actually because maybe the quinoa can help save this a bit. Cheers. 
it's better, but it's really still sweet. It has a really good texture. Like the texture is really just great, like crisp, 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 crisp. And that's wonderful. But the problem you're getting is the same problem I had when I was eating the plain chocolate straight. It's incredibly sweet. Like if this was a 70% of the quinoa, I think it would have a lot better flavor. As it is, it's just really hard to eat as you're supposed to eat it. It's because it's just so sweet. Now, I'm an, an adult eating this. Maybe for a 10 year old, it's great. It's just really sweet. We must do, of course, one last thing with this. Let's enter the giveaway now. Oh, we have to enter a lot of information to even apply. Wow. Wow. I don't want to enter this. I went through a phase where I was entering giveaways a lot. And all the times, I never put in that much information ahead of time for a giveaway. Like, wow, that's a lot of information. I'm not comfortable with that. Like, I I'm good. I I'm very good. On the chocolate itself, it's not the worst I've eaten. It it's got potential. So normally I don't like reviewing chocolate makers this early in their process anyway. I find there's kind of a sweet spot where the first 18 to 36 months, they're figuring themselves out. They're learning, they're growing. And the style they have at the beginning, the first six months especially, might be drastically different than how they are at three years. And so I like to give makers multiple tries as they grow and develop. I have other problems. And really my frustration boils down to this. Mr. Beast, if you ever watch this video, you have an amazing opportunity here to talk about the issue going on around the world, but especially on the Ivory Coast, of child labor and forced child slavery in Africa and around the world. Cacao is really an industry that needs a lot of support. And while the craft and bean to bar industries are working on it, there's been very slow going with the major market brands, especially Nestle, Mars, Cargill, all that group and you don't put it on a single bar. It's not even on your Instagram. It's not on your Twitter feed. You could have made such a huge impact. And yes, Mr. Beast chocolate is Rainforest Lion certified and that's great. Likely his chocolate is from a good cacao source, but we don't know. And he could have discussed that. He could have talked about how transparency is really important in cacao right now and what you can do to make a difference. And he didn't. Instead, this is a giveaway that ends April 22nd. I don't know if he's going to be making chocolate in six months. I mean, he's giving away the factory as one of the giveaway prizes, so probably not. He'll probably move to the next thing. And for someone who spent so much energy on trying to plant trees and save the oceans, he didn't want to talk about stopping children from being in slavery? I don't get it. So I do at least want to end this on a positive note. One, I think this is better chocolate than I expected. Cool. Two, there are some action steps you can take and I can take in order to have better chocolate in the world with less child labor and less child slavery. One, definitely ask Mr. Beast to talk about it and all chocolate makers actually. One of the big things we need to do is ask these chocolate makers to step up and be willing to walk away from buying from them if they don't, because this should be just standard that we have transparent information on where cacao comes from and if the farmers are being paid fairly. Number two, learn more about the state of child labor and child slavery in cacao. I've got some links below. It's not the most fun part of these action steps, but it's something worth learning about and learning about how you can talk about it with other people because spreading the word is really, really important. And number three, my favorite part of this, buy bean to bar chocolate. It'll say bean to bar, it'll have the information, you'll know about where you're ordering from and where the farmers are coming from and if they're being paid fairly. I've got a playlist up above and down below of some of my favorite bean to bar chocolate makers, but also I know that they're not the cheapest things on the whole, it's much more expensive than even Mr. Beast. So there's Theo Chocolate in the US who is about $2.50 to $4 a bar and also in Canada, you've got Hummingbird Chocolate who's a bit more money, like about five to six bucks a bar, but so good. I'm gonna have to do a video on them. I just keep on eating all my chocolate from them. So those are my thoughts on the Mr. Beast chocolate. Am I gonna buy it again? No. <laughs> this chocolate feels super about the giveaway. First and foremost, they're gonna sell out. Hopefully this will get people more excited in learning more about chocolate, but it's not one that I'm interested in buying again, even if it stays in the market. But I'm hopeful, maybe he'll make some more. I'm hoping for an oat milk. I really think a 55% oat milk would be really good for his target market, really snacky, especially with quinoa, that'd be awesome. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Have you tried Mr. Beast chocolate? Are you going to? I'd love to hear all your thoughts about it. And with that, I will catch you next time. Later.